Hello students, in this lecture we will learn the basics of linear programming. So this is an introductory lecture. It is a technique for determining an optimum schedule of interdependent activities in view of the available resources means we are interested in the optimum schedule of interdependent activities it may be the number of units of each kind of products to be produced it could be the optimum allocation of resources for a particular project <coughs> It could be the optimum allocation of different engineers to different projects, etc. Okay, so it deals with optimization that is maximization or minimization of a function of variables known as objective function. Subject to a set of equations and or inequalities which are known as constraints. So as already discussed in the previous lectures, so we have to work under certain limitations of resources. So those can be written as linear set of equations or inequations and we call them as constraints. The word linear used is used to indicate that all the relationships involved in, in a particular problem are linear means the degree of variables is one the word programming refers to the process of determining a particular plan of action from among several alternatives so in fact there may be several alternatives, several alternative solutions available to us and we are interested in that solution which either provides us the maximum possible value or the minimum possible value. That is optimum value to the objective functions. So that is why this word is there. Now, first of all, let us discuss the linear uh, assumptions of linear programming models basically model is a simplified representation of a real life situation uh, that is not actually the real situation so we assume okay we assume uh, we try to model that actual situation and under certain assumptions we try to approximate that situation so first assumption of linear programming models is proportionality this exists in the objective function as well as in the constraints so this assumption implies that if a product yields a profit of rupees 5 then the profit earned from the sale of 12 of such units will be 5 into 12 that is 60. So this is the meaning of proportionality. Right? Similarly, another assumption is additivity. It means that if P1 is the profit earned from the sale of product A and P2 is the profit earned from the sale of product B, then the total profit from the sale of both the products would, would be P1 plus P2. So that is the additivity. Okay, the different effects are additive in nature. Next is certainty. Various parameters, namely the coefficients in the objective function, right hand side values of the constraints, and the resource values in the left hand side of constraints 
are certainly and precisely known and that their values do not vary with time okay so the parameters are deterministic fixed values their values do not change with time so this is another assumption that that is why these linear programming models are also called uh, deterministic models they are not probabilistic continuity is the next assumption this implies that the decision variables are continuous that is they can take any non negative values that satisfy the constraints so these and they, these can take fractional values even okay so this is whenever we are interested in only integral values we have a different programming problem that is integer programming problem so now let us try to understand what we have discussed in the previous slides so let us take a sample linear programming model okay so lpp mean linear programming problem maximize the objective function z which is equal to 4x1 plus 3x2 plus 6x3 so subject to the constraints 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 2x3 less than equal to 440 4x1 plus 3x3 less than equal to 470 2x1 plus 5x2 less than equal to 430 now this z is equal to this this is objective function that we would like to maximize and these are the constraints these three are the constraints so, uh, and where x1 x2 x3 greater than equal to 0 so these are called as non negativity restrictions okay so here we can see that okay 4x1 plus 3x2 plus 6x3 so these are the individual contributions from the x1 variable x2 variable and x3 variable so total contribution is the sum of these three similarly 2 3 and 2 are resource coefficients in the left hand side of the constraints and similarly 4 and 3 here in the second constraint 2 and 5 in the third constraint and these are the right hand side values that is 440 470 and 430 all these coefficients all these values are certain fixed and precise they do not change with time okay so that was told in the previous slides like the various assumptions like proportionality certainty continuity etc additivity etc okay so coming to next that is formulation of linear programming problems now we will know how to formulate linear programming problems okay the so first step here is just define the variables of the problem establish interrelationships between these variables formulate the objective function and the constraints and after that write the non negativity restrictions also so this helps us to develop a linear programming model now coming next to an example example number one which i have taken uh, for this production allocation problem okay what is the problem a firm produces three products these products are processed on three different machines the time required to manufacture one unit of each of the three products and the daily capacity of the three machines are given in the table below so table 2.1 here machines m1 m2 and m3 time per unit in minutes for product 1 product 2 and product 3 
is given here in these columns machine capacity per uh, minutes per day is given here okay so we can see from the table uh, it is required to determine the daily number of units to be manufactured for each product that is how how much of uh, the product one to be produced how much of product to be produced how much of product three to be produced the profit per unit of product one two and three is rupee four rupees three and rupees six respectively it is assumed that all the amounts produced are consumed in the market formulate the mathematical linear programming model that will maximize the daily profits so this is the problem with us now we want to model it as linear programming model so we will follow the steps as given in the previous slide now coming to this step one from the study of situation find the key decision to be made it, in this connection looking for variables helps considerably in the given situation key decision is to decide the number of units of products one two and three to be produced daily step two assume symbols for variable quantities noticed in step one so let the number of units of products 1 2 and 3 manufacture daily be x1 x2 and x3 now what we are doing we are denoting these number of units of different kind of products to be produced by the variables x1 x2 and x3 in step 3 express the feasible alternatives mathematically in terms of variables feasible alternatives are those which are physically economically and financially possible in the given situation feasible alternatives are sets of x1 x2 and x3 where these are greater than or equal to zero since negative production has no meaning and is not feasible that's why their values are positive or zero so these are the different values of these the three different kind of variables step four mention the objective quantitatively and express it as linear function of variables in the present situation objective is to maximize the profit that is maximize z is equal to 4x1 plus 3x2 plus 6x3 so this has been designed from the data available we can see here let me go to the previous slides you can see here it is given okay that the profit per unit from these products is 4 3 and 6 respectively so 4 3 and 6 so if, if x1 number of units of product 1 to be produced x2 units of product to be produced x3 units of product 3 to be produced then the total profit would be 4x1 plus 3x2 plus 6x3 that is the sum of the profit earned from product 1 product 2 and product 3 respectively step 5 put into words the influencing factors or constraints these occur generally because of constraints on availability that is resources or requirements that is demands Express these constraints also as linear equations or inequalities in terms of variables. So, this is now the linear programming model that is coming. So, here the constraints are on the machine capacities and can be mathematically expressed as. So, these has been, these have been expressed from the data available in the table so we can see here 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 2x3 less than equal to 440 let me go to the table so see here 
so the time per unit on machine one okay that is uh, consumed by product one that is two units by product two three units by product three two units so if x1 units of product one have to be uh, has to be produced and x2 units of uh, product two have to be produced and x3 units of product three to be produced then the total consumption of time of machine m1 would be 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 2x3 and there is a constraint on the capacity machine capacity that is 440 minutes are available per day so that is this left hand side should be less than equal to 440 and similar explanation can be given to other two columns or rows okay so this is the constraints from the first row and this is the constraint from the second row and this is constraint from the third row now we have formulated the constraints also therefore the complete mathematical linear programming model for the problem can be written as now this complete lp model consists of what mm, objective function constraints and non negativity restrictions so maximize z which we have just formulated in the previous slide that is 4x1 plus 3x2 plus 6x3 and subject to the constraints that is these constraints so i am writing these constraints here 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 2x3 less than equal to 440 4x1 plus 3x3 less than equal to 470 2x1 plus 5x2 less than equal to 430 where x1 x2 and x3 that is these three decision variables are greater than equal to zero <coughs> because negative production is not possible so this is how we have formulated the linear programming model for the given problem okay thank you very much i hope you have understood everything Okay, in case of any questions, you can come to the class as for the timetable. Thank you so much.